I'm going to turn it over to uh, Director Stallings. Uh, again, I just want to remind people to be patient, number one. There's a lot of damage. Uh, thankfully, it's contained in a few small areas, so we're working very quickly. But also be weather aware tonight and just continue to be very cautious around these areas uh, so we don't have further injuries from you know any kind of construction debris, trees that, that may be leaning, not secured or falling yet and other things of that nature. So with that, I'll turn it over to Director Stallings. Then we're gonna take some questions and obviously uh, we have a lot of local officials that are with, here with us that can help answer questions as well. Chris. Good afternoon. First and foremost, I do wanna thank the governor and first lady for their quick response. It's their leadership that allowed us to have that state of emergency put in place uh, to allow us to do what we do. Witnessing the devastation that occurred uh, with these storms is a reminder of just the power and unpredictability of the weather and how important it is to have a plan in place for you and your loved ones. In the immediate aftermath of the tornado in Troop County and the, se the severe uh, weather across West Georgia, we began working with our local officials to ensure public safety and coordinated response to all our resources. The response to Sunday's weather event, though, was extremely complicated due to the extraordinary rainfall that followed. We received over the last 24 hours inches in the teens uh, of rain in the West Georgia area. Through the rains uh, we're moving out, we continue to work with those that were impacted, getting in uh, resources as quickly as possible. Currently, we have more than 40 state law enforcement officers in the area working, and I can't thank our partners with the Georgia Forestry Commission, uh, the Department of Transportation, the Department of Public Safety, the Department of Natural Resources enough and those commissioners and their leadership for uh, answering the call as quickly as possible. Initial damage assessments from the tornadoes are underway. Our partners with the National Weather Service are here and they've began those uh, initial assessments and so those reports will be coming out uh, when they have those completed. Also our team will begin preliminary damage assessments and so we'll be looking into all the resources that it took to respond to an incident like this. Uh, the Red Cross currently has two shelters that are open, one here in Troop County at Point University Gym on, a uh, on Avenue D in West Point, and the second in Baldwin County at New Beginnings on Southside Drive in Milledgeville for those that are displaced. We're asking the public to stay clear of the damaged areas and roadways in order for us to respond. As the governor said, patience is going to be the watchword. As you've seen this devastation, I know folks want to get back to their homes and find their items that they've lost and, and see the destruction, but at the same time with these power companies out here, there's a lot of live wires, there are gas mains that still need to be protected, there are a lot of things. So there are going to be a lot of law enforcement. Uh, if you do have to come back to the area, please if you do have an ID with you so that we can confirm uh, that this is where you reside. We don't want just anyone roaming through the area. We care about your stuff like you do. Additionally, there are roadways and bridges that are flooded or currently near flooding conditions. So if you see a flooded roadway, please turn around. Don't try to cross it. Don't attempt to cross a roadway where there's running water. Two feet of water can sweep away a full-size SUV. So make sure you are, are, are wise to that. And lastly, please continue to monitor your local radio stations and your trusted news sources for following updates. As the governor mentioned, the uh, Army Corps of Engineers has opened all six gates at West Point to try to control the water. We do have a rising level from the inundation from the rain uh, into the spillways. And then as he mentioned, the, the dam that uh, was breached and it wasn't, there was some confusion with the dam felling or water going over the top of a temporary dam. And so in Spalding County at the reservoir, there is a temporary dam for some remodeling that was being done on the existing dam. And so that dam did have some water go over the top. It has not failed, uh, but it, there is some flooding in that area. But as we mentioned, there's a lot of roadways that are underwater. If you see swift moving water uh, up around bridges, don't take your chances. You, until it's been inspected by engineers, we're not gonna be crossing them. And I'll highlight one further thing before I give it back to the governor, is that if a bridge is closed, it can't be open until it's been inspected. Give us patience. It takes a lot of time. There are a lot more bridges than we have inspectors. And so as we get those teams out there to do those inspections, we want you to be able to get back into your homes as quickly as possible, but we want you to do it as safely as possible. 
with that, I'll turn it back over to the governor and then we'll take questions from there.